Hi everyone, Suzette Martinez Valadares here. Welcome to my home, um, actually to my kitchen table, quite literally. Um, I figure it's the best place for us to talk about the kitchen table issues that matter most to you. It's where my husband and I decide a lot of things, or rather, where he agrees with me quite often. I wish. <laughs> um, I'm super excited. This is my first Facebook Live Town Hall. I'm going to be hosting these right here in my kitchen every Wednesday from now. Uh, and even when I get to Washington to represent you in Congress from Washington, I will connect with you every Wednesday as well. I think it's super important, important that our members are transparent and accessible and that every constituent in our district and every citizen in our district has the opportunity to talk to me about the issues that matter most face to face. And while sometimes I may be thousand miles away, there's no way, there's no reason we can't do this together face to face on Facebook with modern technology and social media. I love social media. Uh, I do have a lovely cup of coffee here today to keep me going for the rest of the night, but I'd love to hear some questions from you. If, um, if you guys have any, I can, otherwise I'll just jump into um, why I'm running uh, after I have a few sips of my coffee here. So I really decided to run um, for two reasons. The first reason being my daughter, Charlotte, who I think is um, somewhere outside, maybe with my husband, um, taking down the trash or they're, they're doing something before we start our bedtime routine. But I have actually 20 nieces and nephews and I was the last to have, um, Charlotte. I was the last to have children. So I thought I knew a thing about kids, um, and was ready for them and I knew my life would change. But when you actually have children, your priorities change more than you could have ever imagined. I, um, and specifically the future, the future means more to you than you could have ever imagined. So the birth of my daughter as well as my mother. My mother has really inspired me um, and without her influence in my life, this journey just couldn't have been possible. A lot of journeys in my life couldn't be possible. Last year, she encouraged me to venture off into my own and to start my own business. And um, not a month and a half later, mom was diagnosed, actually after six months of being in remission, she was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. It was one of the toughest things that I've ever had to deal with. I found myself um, putting my small business definitely on the side but I also found myself being her full-time caregiver. I was responsible for her advanced directive. Uh, her, I was her power of attorney. And I was literally her healthcare advocate, literally, literally fighting with insurance agencies uh, on, while she was on her deathbed. I was fighting so that she would have the quality care in the, her dying days that everybody deserves. That made me kind of realize how broken the system is and that it is not working for everyday Americans. So my mother and my daughter have really inspired me to ask myself, um, I'm, I consider myself a conservative, specifically I consider myself a modern uh, Republican, not to be confused with moderate because I believe that there are conservative solutions to our modern day issues. Well, I found myself asking, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking this from somebody um, because I didn't think of this, but I found myself answering this, is that if not me, who, and if not now, when? When I really got down to asking those questions and talking to those questions with my family, I knew and we knew and Shane and I decided um, that it was time for me to do something about it, to put my hat, put my name in the hat to run for office, to represent the values that are important to my family and to our community. I think we have a question here. Um, 
Thank you, uh, Thomas James, for pulling for me all the way from Alabama. I appreciate that. Uh, we do need support far and wide to take on um, uh, Ms. Hill here in the 25th Congressional District. Uh, thank you for your support. There is also uh, Anthony, Anthony Cabeza. Yes, um, I have heard of Measure EE, and I am a huge supporter of education. But I, especially coming from California, do not like taxes. Every which way the state can tax us, they are taxing us. We're feeling it at the gas pump. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, right? I have a friend who lives in Tennessee that's paying less than $2 a gallon for gas, and here in California, we're paying upwards of $5. Uh, another um, constituent here in the 25th that I was talking to was has a big SUV and he was telling me that he literally cannot fill up his tank because something with his bank card only allows a um, hundred dollar allocation when he's pumping gas so that's not enough to fill up his tank it, it's pretty ridiculous so in terms of measuring I think there's 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 just not an appetite to tax anymore. I think there's a huge appetite in our community to make government spend our money more wisely. Great question, Anthony. Uh, the other thing that, um, the other one of the other key reasons I decided to run um, is I was actually also, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about healthcare. I was the executive director over at Autism Speaks for about three years, three and a half years. And I have a niece who was um, diagnosed at the age of two as severely developmentally delayed. She was nonverbal and on the autism spectrum. Um, I had actually just started working for Congressman Buck McKeon in his district office when she was diagnosed. And we, my family was very fortunate that my mother had worked for a Los Angeles, uh, I'm sorry, Los Angeles um, school district for over 25 years in the special needs, uh, in special needs and as a healthcare assistant. And she was able to see some of the signs, so had my niece diagnosed early. And man, my niece who literally didn't have one word in her vocabulary, uh, went to just, her early intervention services were just, amazing and she went from this little girl who would throw fits because she was extremely intelligent but couldn't express her wants and needs she would have these horrible crying fits because of it so she went from not having any means of communicating to going through therapy you know two four sometimes six hours a day um, to really a year or two later being a high functioning, very verbal little girl who loves to argue with me today. She's, she's 13, so it's, it's right about that time where she questions everything, which, which I absolutely love. She really inspired me to get involved in early intervention services, to work for Autism Speaks. While I was working at Autism Speaks, I um, met so many families um, affected by this spectrum disorder. And when I think about the services that they need, when I think about um, my time advocating for them in Sacramento, in Washington, um, here in Los Angeles, when I think about my mother's experience, when I think about my own experience having been in a horrible accident uh, uh, a week before my wedding, I actually broke seven ribs, uh, punctured my lung, and uh, fractured my sternum. Um, it, 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 you know, 14 days and hundreds of thousand dollars later, um, I was finally able to uh, go home. Our system is broken, and I think that what the progressive liberal left is advocating for, a universal single pale health system, um, or either of those, would be detrimental to the very individuals that I have spent decades advocating for, including my own my own family. It's so important that we bring down the cost of healthcare, that we look at the things that we can do right off the bat that we know are going to work to bring down the cost of healthcare. We can, for instance, sell, uh, allow insurance agencies to sell their policies across state lines. Um, one of the ideas that I love most is, um, so is, is gaining some support, uh, some support, and I think constituents in our 
um, or actually residents in the 25th Congressional District will really understand this next idea is we all know what DARPA is and we all know that when DARPA was created back in the 1950s that it was created to make sure that our country was safe we had the strongest military and defense system in the world and DARPA and through DARPA bringing together the greatest minds engineers um, and individuals in, in the defense industry um, things like the laser um, the internet GPS uh, these amazing technologies have come out of DARPA and I don't understand why we don't have a healthcare DARPA, a HARPA, a system that can really bring together um, the brightest minds, public private collaboratives, collaboratives to advance biomedical research that actually finds therapies, that finds cures, ultimately bringing down the cost of healthcare. It's an issue that is very important to me. I think we need to start finding cures for the 5,000 plus chronic illnesses that cost Americans billions of dollars every year from heart disease to Alzheimer's to um, autism and even cancer. You know, my mom's cancer is she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, just like. You know, Alec Trebek recently was diagnosed and Patrick Swayze passed away from this. So did Aretha Franklin. And come to find out, there wasn't, um, there hasn't been a single new treatment or early diagnosis um, advancement in over 40 years. We're the greatest country in America and we can do this and we need some real leadership on it. Uh, the other... Um, did I have a question here? I'm sorry, guys. I I think, any question? I th okay, I think I answered that. Um, I think somebody may have hopped in and asked why I'm running. I'll repeat that really briefly. Um, I'm running because uh, of my daughter. I um, The future means more to me than anything, and I want to make sure she grows up in a safe and secure America. I want to make sure that she gets a quality education that she goes to school uh, and is safe and it's free of violence and that there's she's not having to deal with drugs and, and gangs and I want to make sure that government understands that their role in her life is to be limited so my daughter is really what drives me past some of these really long days um, and nights and, and weekends um, my love for her really pushes me, pushes me past during those hard times. And the other reason I'm running is, is because of my mom. Um, my mom was an amazing person who taught me from a very young age um, to respect myself, to speak up for others, to defend others, um, and to really do everything in my power to make our community a better place. So in our household, I, I volunteered quite a bit. Um, and uh, was always pretty vocal, really interesting en enough on kind of um, how I, two things. One, how I realized that you can make a difference in the world was actually in, uh, in third grade, you guys are really getting to know me tonight, uh, <laughs> was in third grade, um, there was something called the Exxon Valdez uh, mobile oil spill. So I know some of you think I'm pretty young, but I'm a little older than you probably think. And I was in the third grade when that oil spill happened. And I remember seeing, hi, hi Jax, my English bull terrier wants to join the conversation here. So I remember seeing on TV these little birds covered in oil. I remember really being concerned about the environment and was, what was going on. And I went back to school. Uh, the next day and you know, we talked and my teacher was like what current events can we talk about and I was talking about the the oil spill and my teacher asked um, Well, Suzette, what do you think we should do about it? So I kind of I thought about it and I'm like we should write the president of the United States <laughs> So my entire third grade class um, Mr. Smith actually mr. Mr. Smith were Facebook friends. So if you're if you're listening or if you catch this later, I'm talking about you in your class in third grade. Um, so uh, our entire class, he wrote us back, <laughs> so or his secretary or somebody wrote us back. So I really realized that when you come together, when you voice your opinion about somebody, even the president of the United States, 
um, will answer you. May, you may always like the answer that you're getting, but you can make you can make you can make change. And the other reason, um, or other I guess key um, political moment in my life was in high school. I was um, a senior in high school, and Al Gore was running uh, for president, and he was stumping here in Los Angeles and was speaking at, I think it was that we went to like Fairfax High and I was invited by a counselor of mine to go um, see Al Gore speak. And I was sitting there and people were cheering and I was like, everything coming out of his mouth directly contradicts the very values my parents raised me on. That you work hard, that when you work hard and you earn you know, your dollar, my dad was a small business owner, is a small business owner, you know, um, that's how you, you make it through life. And that's part of the American dream. And when you work hard, you can do anything. You know, we're Hispanic. We come from, um, you know, friends and family have left places like Nicaragua or Venezuela or, or Cuba or my husband's family, Guatemala, and some of his family, um, Eastern European, that left communism and left socialism for America, for capitalism. Um, and I really realized then that I had to do some research on, on you know, what I was politically. I also looked around me and saw that my high school um, dropout rate was 50, 60% that, you know, my br older brothers had got involved with gangs or drugs. And the very people that were representing me were called Democrats trying to help our community were not helping our community. So I figured out pretty quickly that I'm a conservative and I'm a Republican. And I, you know, while my mom was a, a JFK Democrat, um, she was raised Catholic, um, I'm a conservative. Um, so Al Gore, yes, thank you. You invented the internet and you invented Suzette Martinez Valderas, the conservative. Thank you, Al Gore. Hi, Benny, how are you? Thank you for joining. Benny is a good friend of mine. I've um, known him for a few years. Um, he also has an amazing story. He's uh, from the San Fernando Valley and uh, where I grew up. And he has recently, I guess, joined the Lexit movement uh, and or Latinos leaving the Democrat party. So um, Benny, thank you for being woke. It's one of my new terms. <laughs> I think you have a question here. How do you feel about the president's trade agreement with Mexico and Canada? You know, I definitely support um, the president's uh, trade agreement. I think it's an important step um, for us, um, and it, you know, I agree with it. You know, one hundred percent. Great question. Um, okay, guys. The last, I guess, you know, that does, you know, if we have a few minutes here before I have to go do bedtime routine with Charlotte. Um, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about immigration and um, the southern border. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I guess I do have a question. Uh, I'm going to get to immigration and then I'll get to, to, to uh, I'm going to get to immigration and then I'll get to this other question, the, uh, this last question. So my position on immigration reform um, is very common sense. Um, first of all, I think we need true immigration reform. Um, I think um, the president had some good suggestions on what we can do around immigration and visas specifically. Um, I, you know, so I, we need to streamline a lot of the processes with immigration and even legal immigration, both for the undocumented community and the documented community. Um, the system is just, it's broken and it, it, it takes forever to do the most simplest of things. I was talking to uh, Richard Lowell out, or out here, um, or an attorney out here, who had a client who lost some of their documents and it's gonna take her three years to get those documents replaced. That's just, that's simply ridiculous. And three years to turn around something very basic um, should not, not be the status quo. I also support a safe, secure, and modern border. You know, I think about my 
brothers, uh, my family members, addiction to drugs. I think about the drug trafficking at the southern border coming into the drugs coming into our community affecting the lives of our children our family our friends drugs ruins lives and and kills people and if we can stop that at the southern border we need to fund that i'm so concerned about um, the sex trafficking and the human trafficking and last year there being over 16,000 document documented cases of child abuse i think about the child abuse of little little girls that look like my daughter or the sex trafficking of girls that look like my nieces who are 13 and 14 years old. And this is a direct result of a negligent Congress refusing to adequately fund our father, our, our southern border. So we this is this is again guys, this is common sense. This should be something easy to get through and both sides need to get it together and fund that southern border. Stop using this as a wedge issue. Um, so we had another question about, Suzette, can you explain your stance on education? Your nonprofit work is very interesting. Um, yes, so I've been very fortunate to have worked in the nonprofit world as an executive um, for years and I've kind of, in, in, for different organizations uh, around early learning, early intervention, and, um, aut and, and autism, and all advocacy really. Let's hope my dog doesn't take down this camera. Okay, Jax, you go over there. I'm going to talk about education, right? <laughs> so um, I look at the three, I look at education for my perspective for three different components. I look at early childhood education, I look at K through 12, and I look at um, higher education, our university system. My position on education is that when we have, um, when we have competition and all three of those facets, it's better and it costs less for every student. I'm a huge supporter of early learning. I have, you know, even though I was an advocate for um, an early learning nonprofit, before I had children, um, I see it every day and I truly know and see that there are in early learning zero to five education, um, there are some very basic things that we can do to prepare our children for kindergarten and K through 12, mostly around social and emotional support. I won't get too technical, technical for you guys, but I definitely would support at the federal level. Um, Ivanka Trump has some really great suggestions about early learning um, and childcare, um, specifically um, block competitive block grants for early learning, um, which I think is, Jax, you need to stop. <laughs> My dog is gonna jump in right here, guys. Um, so that's my position on early learning. On K through 12, I, um, you know, went, I graduated in, uh, from a public school. I, of course, support public schools, but I also support charter schools and I support vouchers. And I believe that some of the, like every industry, you know, we have some good schools, we have some bad schools, um, and there needs to be oversight and accountability. But I support, you know, the growing demand for charter schools here in California is because a lot of the schools have been failing. And I see that in, you know, where I grew up, my nieces and my sister-in-laws are looking for schools that offer their children a quality education. There's these huge long wait lists for charter schools because they're producing quality education. And every parent wants their child to have a quality education, to go to college or to find an apprenticeship or to have some opportunity to enter a career that can help them succeed for the rest of their life. So I'm very much supportive of competition. Um, the last bit here, guys, before I sign off, um, as well as higher education. <sighs> higher education is a very complex matter right now, specifically because, you know, I've, talking, I've been talking to a, a few um, financial um, advisors here in, in, in town, and obviously it's a big issue too. Um, the student loan debt is just out of control. I have family members who have two up, you know, up to $200,000 worth of debt. It's just absolutely insane. When I went to College of the Canyons, I think I was paying like $11 a unit and now it's, you know, upwards of $130 or it may be even more right now. I'm not I'm not too sure on that. But higher education has just gotten more expensive and more expensive uh, and that is due to the student loan debt and eventually 
that there is going to be a bubble and it's going to come down hard on our economy. It's something that we need to address. I think we need more competition in the higher market. Um, I do support um, private universities. We don't currently have a level playing field for them. I was talking to um, Sandra Johnson, who um, over at the University of Antelope Valley, who has a magnificent school. And, you know, interesting fact is she is able to keep her, uh, so private institutions are required to keep their default rate um, pretty low. And I think, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30% is average. I think above that can get you in trouble. And they're, they're able to keep it, I think, you know, less than 1%, if, if, if not, you know, lower than that, right, rated here. And that's because they have financial monthly financial planning um, courses with their students. So this is something that's amazing and public institutions should be doing the same thing. So guys, we did cover quite a few topics. Um, I'm looking forward to doing this again next week and um, talking to you a little bit more, a little bit more about my policy positions and about myself personally and what's important to me and why I'm just um, a tad bit um, crazy for running for Congress because I love my district and I love my family and I love the United States of America. So thank you for joining on. I look forward to seeing you next week. If you want to find out some more information about me, visit Um, You can connect with me and my team, DM me, leave me a Facebook message, and um, I try and respond as soon as possible. Uh, again, guys, have a good night, and thanks for your time.